I need you to do something for me. Can't ask any questions and we're going to hurt some people. When are we going? Whose car are we taking? Fuck you. you. I didn't, you didn't tease me. You didn't tease me. You didn't, te- you didn't practice this with me. You were just like, I fucking let go. This is the freaking movie. This is the line for. It's probably like the most famous it interaction is. in it the whole is. open movie. It is. It's also fucking 11 a.m. <laughs> 11 a.m. on a Tuesday. Erroneous. Irrelevant. Preposterous. This was not prepped or anything. I just. <laughs> I'm, it's 11 a.m. All of a sudden, both starts quoting the movie at me. And I was like, what the shit's happening? Uh, I can't remember the exact whole thing. Anyway, yeah. fucking great movie. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back to Filmography. This is our second episode in our Ben Affleck directed series. I'm Caleb Boatman. And I'm with Caleb me, Boatman. as always, is Caleb Coho. Oh. Anyway, so uh, we are talking about Ben Affleck's second film, which is The Town. Um, big shocker, this one also takes place in Boston. Wow, um, I actually would have assumed it was in a uh, small town, Keystone, Missouri. But you know. Yeah, yeah, no, the, that's the name of the town. Is it's, it's Keystone, Missouri. This is about a group of professional bank robbers. In they rob the one bank in Keystone, they do it six times a day, and they close the one bridge to get out of Keystone. <laughs> the sheriff is just like an old guy who's like, oh, darn. It's they Tommy Lee Jones again. from No Country for Old Men. He's just chasing him down. <laughs> oh, darn. Well, they got away. I'm going to go back to playing tiddlywinks. <laughs> uh, let me get my Tetris back up. That's making people mad. They made a movie. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. uh, so I had seen the town. Had you seen the town before? I had seen the town once a long time ago, and I didn't have much memory of it. That's fair, because I no, I remember this because you and I got into a big fight over. Actually, we got into two fights over two different performances for me, and I am so ready for you to eat crow on both of those and be like, "We'll see." No, they're good. Um, you said Jeremy Renner didn't deserve his nomination. I stand by that. Okay, well, screw you. And I, then think he's, I, I think he's really good. I just don't think he makes my five in that year. Actually, he's not even my pick for best supporting actor in this movie, to be honest with you. But you're you're a John Ham slut. Aren't I you? think this is like John Ham's maybe best performance. I think he's incredibly good. I mean, in film or in, in, fil- film? Well, in, in film, I'm not crazy. He's been okay. in Mad Men. Okay, Mad Men's like the best thing he's ever done. Yeah. No, if if we're talking in film, I I'll I'll get behind that. I'll get behind it's, that. I, I think it's that or confess Fletch. So it's like there's not a lot of options. We don't get a lot of John Hamm as a leading. Well, man, we'll get into like, it. But they movies don't know how to use John Hamm. Like there are not many movies that know how to use John Hamm. Um, but yeah, uh, the other one, and I know that you're gonna eat crow on this one, Blake Lively. Blake Lively's phenomenal. She's really good. Blake Lively is so good in this. But anyway, uh, do we want to just get started talking about the movie, or is there any background stuff? Um, I think the be- there's not too much background on the town. The big thing is that um, the novel Prince of Thieves that it's based on was picked up by Dick Wolf. Uh, if you know who that is, that's yeah. the guy wow. who knows Law and Order. <laughs> Uh, and the, uh, wait, like not to get out too much of a tangent here, but one of the coolest names of all time, <laughs> like Dick Wolf. Dick Wolf. It also is the setup for a great joke in Jane Silent Bob reboot. <laughs> great <laughs> joke. Um, but uh, he he signs on to produce it. Project falls through. In two thousand six, Adrian Lin brings the novel to Graham King, who produced The Departed, and goes, "I have your next." departed um your next big hit uh he then takes it to warner brothers uh and adrian lynn's gonna direct it and sheldon turner is gonna write it if you know who sheldon turner is he's an academy award nominee for up in the air um he has also written x-men first class he's he's written a lot of things like kind of things like that so sheldon turner uh writes the script uh he ends up not getting credit because they throw the whole thing out um he Adrian Lynn envisions this to be a three and a half hour long Scorsese crime epic to the point where Scorsese momentarily gets attached to produce the movie. Um, and then in 2008, 
They settle on the name the town. Uh, they said they don't want to spend $90 million on it, so Adrian Lynn leaves. And they hire Ben Affleck, fresh off of Gone Baby Gone, to direct the movie. Um, he comes in. He goes, I'm going to star. Uh, they were like, great. You get to direct, and you bring in Aaron Stocker to do a page one rewrite uh, on the movie. They come in, and they change it a lot. He said he really wanted to direct it because he like researched and understood the area. Um, Aaron Stocker, who wrote God Baby Gone and The Town of Them, is his high school classmate. Uh, oh, so they have history. That. They have history together. So, like, they grew up in Boston. So that's why he brings him in to help him write this one. Um, additionally, they get Peter Craig in to help write Peter Craig, most notably becoming an Oscar nominee for writing Top Gun Maverick. He also wrote The Batman. Um, so he helps write this one, one of his first movies. Um, they go through the casting process. Uh, they get the people they do. It's not a lot of crazy casting stories. Ben Affleck basically got the person he wanted for every part on the first ask. Uh, he wanted Jeremy Renner. He wanted John Hamm. He wanted Rebecca Hall. He wanted Blake Lively. Uh, and he got all of them. Uh, so That's interesting. When when did Mad Men start? Mad Men started, I believe, in 2009, 2008. Okay. Okay. I For whatever reason, 2007. Um, yeah. For whatever reason, I always think of that as later so i was like well the, that show gets that show doesn't get super popular till 2010 like the first three seasons are like a hit but not like a mega hit and so then in 2010 kind of it's john ham takes off so it's kind of funny to presume that affleck was probably like one of the people who was like probably watching it before it became like a mega hit then oh no absolutely john ham was like the th reason you were watching Mad Men. It was like mm -hmm. you need to watch this to see John Hamm's performance. And I'm sure Ben Affleck was watching it because he likes the idea of that show. That's a very that seems like a very Ben Affleck show. That does seem like very Ben. Affleck. And like, and I think he just tuned in and was like, "This guy is a star." And he's right. John Hamm is a mega talent actor that yeah. no one knows how to use. So I I think we're ready to just jump into the movie, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, this movie opens with a freaking awesome, like, title card. Like, I don't usually, like, point out these little, like, you know, the just prologue things in the movie. But I just think it's awesome of how this movie sets itself up. Like, there's a neighborhood in Boston where all of this criminal activity has come from. Charlestown. Like, what a just great way to just hype up your crime movie. It's so good. Of, like, it's so good. And then this opening is so freaking great. Like, God Maybe God had a g okay opening. Like, it's not like, it's like, okay, here's the setup for everything going down. This movie opens just with a swinging right out of the gate. Like, we're mid-robbery. And, I like, we don't have any information beyond what we were just given in the prologue. And we just get an awesome, like, robbery sequence that is so great. Like, I, I think Affleck directs this sequence so well. Um, like, there's there's a lot of great tension with it. Uh, Jeremy Renner, man. I, I I love this guy's performance. I think he is just he so is great. good in that. I think Jeremy Renner is great. When I say he doesn't deserve his Oscar nomination, it's purely because I think this is a really good year for supporting actor performances. So, like, I he doesn't quite make my group, but, like, it's not crazy to say he, like, is an Oscar nominee for this because I think he's good. Like, he's quite good. Um, I think that he he brings this wild card intensity that you're just, like, so you are, like, scared of Jeremy Renner, like, this whole movie and what he could do. And you understand why Ben Affleck gets nervous around him. And you also kind of understand why Ben Affleck likes him. And it's, like, it's a weird thing where it's like you see these two characters in their relationship at the beginning and how much they are like ride or die for each other at least where renner's ride or die for affleck and like but also to see how unhinged renner is and how violent he is and how scary that is mm -hmm. um and i think renner brings so much to that part yeah no he really does um i and i i think that's i think that's the core thing is while this is certainly a great robbery movie a great heist movie I think the core thing that is just so good about this movie is the dynamic between Affleck and Renner. Renner. Like, you have Affleck as this more calculated, sensitive, intelligent guy. Somebody who probably, had he had better circumstances, would not be in the situation that he would be in. Like, he is someone who is smarter than his circumstances. 
Renner is not. Renner is some guy who is probably in the only place in which he can succeed, despite that being crime. And I think that dynamic of Renner as the hothead, Affleck as the more calculated one, and they both have this just close friendship, but also this distrust and disrespect for the other's attitude towards certain things, I think is just such an interesting dynamic. And I think it's what elevates this movie to just an incredible degree. For sure. And at this point, I think this is Renner's second nomination and his last nomination today. And Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of crazy to look at his trajectory where like after this, like this movie sort of accidentally spawns him into the action guy. Like he did SWAT like very early in his career but, like, outside of SWAT, he, he was on a run where it was North Country, Je- the ca- assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford, uh, 28 weeks later. And then he does The Hurt Locker and The Town and gets Oscar nominations. And it's like, they clearly are like, this guy is, like, a, an actor's actor. Like, he's an everyman actor. And then a- off the back of this, he gets Mission Possible Ghost Protocol, Thor, The Avengers, and Born Legacy, and Hansel and Gretel with Hunters, all in one five-movie run where he's like, now I'm a movie star. And then he's kind of tries to go back and do things like American Hustle and Arrival and Wind River, and it never quite works out for him because now he's, I'm the Mission Impossible and Avengers guy. I'm Hawkeye. You know, it's so funny. Uh, I love the bit in Birdman where uh, Riggin is just listing off all these actors that he wants to get and like they're all in superheroes and like jeremy renner and zach galifianakis is like who's like the hurt locker guy and it's like oh he, he's an avenger and it's like they put him in a cape too and it's kind of funny that a movie kind of directly references the fact that renner used to kind of be i we do forget that renner was kind of this more like kind of heavy dramatic weight and then he went into the action guy like you said and now he's hawkeye so i think that's that's a funny point. Definitely. So, yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, that, that entire opening bank robbery is like just so good. And we're introduced to Rebecca Hall uh, as the bank teller. Uh, and she's really good in this. I, I, I like her a lot in this. I think Rebecca Hall is an actress in general who doesn't quite get enough credit. I think she's quite good. I think she's quite good in this. Yeah, I think that she's another actress that like just doesn't really get a lot of opportunities to shine. Um, she's also very kind of un- like underutilized, and she doesn't have a lot of movies where it's like I'm the lead and I get to show you what I can do. Um, I think she does a good job in this. I think she's really solid. Um, but yeah, she didn't like blow me away in this really. Yeah. Um, well, then uh, after that, uh, she is interviewed uh, by the FBI. Which is where we get our introduction to John Hamm. Who I, like, we were were talking about movies don't really utilize John Hamm well. This one absolutely does. Like, he is just so phenomenal. I think it's so interesting to essentially be playing this guy as, who is this hard-nosed FBI agent. But you kind of have this sense of, if life turned out just a little bit different he would be on the other side of the fence oh yeah the, you get the sense that he and affleck are two sides of the same coin and when rebecca hall kind of starts to fall in love with him and he's like well aren't you like into me like there's they that moment where it's like he and rebecca hall have like that momentary flirtation and mm-hmm. you're like and, and you're like i think you can just see it in his face he's like i'm what you should be wanting i'm the Af- i'm affleck if you went down the straight and narrow mm-hmm. And it's like, and it's kind of that moment where you're like, you're like, you kind of get it. But at the same time, he's, uh, John Hamm also has an edge where he's kind of an asshole. Where Affleck doesn't necessarily have that asshole edge uh, for most of the movie. Like, he's smart and he can be a dick when he needs to be. But, like, Affleck's not mean. Like, he's just not a mean guy. Mm-hmm. And Ham has moments where he gets nasty. And you're kind of like, but that's also a perspective thing where it's like mm-hmm. he's chasing Affleck and you want Affleck to win. But I think Ham has those moments where you can see it in him that he could be exactly the same person that Affleck is. Well, there's a, I, I love the moment later down the line when he confronts Blake Lively and he's like, he takes out the $20 bill and he's like, do you know how big this is? And like, that's kind of funny because it's kind of like he's talking about his dick a little bit. Uh, and it's like, is this 
bigger or smaller than six inches. But it's a great scene because he is kind of being a dick to uh, Blake Lively. Uh, he's really being a dick to Blake Lively. And I think that's like such a great interaction between the two of them. Uh, but yeah, then uh, we move on. Um, Affleck and his crew have taken Rebecca Hall hostage. They let her go. Uh, that's when Ham and uh, Hall have their first confrontation. But then Affleck is like, oh, I'm going to go check up on there. And not revealing that he's a criminal. And they start up a romance. And typically in these types of movies, I feel like the romance elements feel really forced. I think it works here. I think this is like such a great dynamic of like these two people are at odds. But she doesn't know who he is and they spark some genuine chemistry between the other. Uh, definitely. And I, yeah, I think you nailed it. I think that this in the chemistry, this movie is just nuts. Um, yeah, I'm with you on that one. I don't have yeah. that. I tried to jump in. I just was like, I don't actually have a lot to say on that. <laughs> Fair. Fair. Uh, yeah. Uh, then this is kind of when we get to, uh, what is, the moment I was trying to recreate with you, um, you know, uh, Rebecca Hall tells Ben Affleck about some of the troubles she's been having uh, with some guys kind of terrorizing her a little bit. And then we just get the great moment. And I think this is where, like, the dynamic between Affleck and Renner is just so good. Where Affleck just goes up to Renner and is like, hey, we're going to hurt some people. You can't ask any questions. And, like, that whole sequence is so good because, like, you can just tell they are genuine friends. Like, they feel like just these are guys who would do anything for each other. Well, and they don't I, just feel like friends. They feel like brothers. Yeah. And that's that's the really special thing about those two is you're just like, these guys are like, this is, say the word and we're doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I I really like the kind of criminal underworld going on in this movie yeah. uh the the idea of you know kind of a crime boss running his stuff out of a flower shop is like i, I which, feel like which to take five seconds pete postlethwaite's fucking terrifying this guy's really so is. good pete so good not get enough credit in general but he's well, yeah. really good in this he was really, really good at, at this part. And, like, I, I thought that was crazy where it's, we get into the movie and, like, some of the people from the from Gone Baby Gone do come back in minor parts. Like, the, the brother of Amy Ryan's in this for, like, five seconds. Um, but Pete Possum, which is, like, shows up, comes in and just eats the scenery. And the moment later in the movie where he has that interaction with Affleck, he's like, no, you're not fucking going anywhere. I'll kill her and I'll kill you. Mm -hmm. It's so fucking good. You're just terrified of them, and of him. He's so good. And then, he's you're right, running it out of the terrifying. running it out of this unassuming flower shop just buys into the reality of Charleston even more, where you're like, this town is crime ridden, but they've known how to adapt to hide it so they can keep getting away with it. I think it is so like because Pete Postlewaite, I don't think is a particularly intimidating looking guy. Not even I think an intimidating sounding guy. And I think that's what makes him so intimidating, is he has so much intensity, but it's kind of unassuming. And I think that's why the flower shop even adds to that, because that's something that could have kind of come across as a little silly. And I think possibly it just makes it work so well. This is a guy who you would not think... It's, it's kind of the same principle. Have you ever seen Snatch? I've never seen Snatch, no. Well, uh, the, the crime boss in that is uh, Bricktop, and I can't think of the, the name of the actor who plays him, but it's this very boring-looking old guy. But the actor plays him with such intensity that he's freaking terrifying. Uh, yeah. So, Postlewaif is great in this. Uh, this is where, then, we get the setup that the uh, they're going to be uh, pulling a heist on Fenway Park, which is such a cool location for a heist. Like, I, you know, usually it's like a bank or an armored car or whatever, whatever. Like, specifically pulling a heist in Fenway Park is just such, like, a great, like, 
this is where our location of our heist is going to be. That's that's just such a great setup for a movie. Right, and having the scouting scene too, like like watching them go through the steps of setting up the heist. Mm-hmm. That's one of my favorite parts of every heist story is just to have like like in Logan Lucky and this and like and Oceans. It's the setup for the heist that I love the most, um, and I think they do it so well. Um, where they're like they're standing there in Fenway watching everything scouting out and they have that conversation. I think it's really good. Uh, to, to backtrack a little bit, I want to talk about one of my other favorite moments in this because I realized I skipped over it with Rebecca and Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck has a really good dramatic monologue here uh, that I didn't even realize Ben Affleck could pull off something that's good. When he talks about his mom as a kid and finding out uh, that she had gone, that is like such a great moment and such a great monologue from him. Definitely. And like, I think that like Affleck and Lively together are just so good. Um, and, and, and that whole interaction with the daughter and like how aggressive he gets in that moment is a lot. And he's really good at that. Is that the, mo- is that the scene we're talking about? Or am I thinking of the wrong scene? You're I'm talking about the scene with Ben Affleck and Rebecca Hall. Oh, I jumped to the lively scene. I don't know why in my mind. I just like okay. jumped to the button. But, but both, you're right. Both scenes are, are great. I'm, I, I'm I, talking about the scene where he talks about lo- losing his mom. Oh, you're right. Sorry. I did. Yes. I don't know where my brain, again, 11 and 30 in the morning and I woke up at 10 50. So like I'm, I'm all over the place. Uh, I, um, I think that monologue with Rebecca Hall is, is Affleck's Oscar moment for me. Uh, I do nominate him. In this year, I think he would make my five for best actor. Oh, you'd make your five. I think that, he'd make my five for best actor. I think he's really, really special. I think it's a really special Affleck performance. He makes that five for director as well. So, like, I, I don't. I think he's like I, the town. Like, is probably a bigger Oscar hit for me in this year than okay. it is for you. I'm I'm gonna name two people, and I I think if you're gonna tell me that Affleck is over these two, I'm a, I'm a little sus. Jeff Bridges in True Grit. Bridges is in my five. Okay. Paul Giamatti in Barney's version. Is in my five. Okay. Okay. Then, then you know what? Yeah. That's that's valid, then. Yeah. I think the only person I probably have that you don't is DiCaprio in Shutter Island. Yeah, I don't have DiCaprio in Shutter Island, but he's, like, my six. Like, it's that's literally fair. on the... It's, like, on the cusp. Like, he's that's grown, valid. so it's, like... Okay. That's, that's fair, then. I'll allow it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's funny that you nominate Affleck and I don't, but I nominate Renner and you don't. Sure, but I do nominate him, so there you go. Eh, Well, that's weird. Anyway, uh, anyway, uh, I also want to talk about Chris Cooper, who is not in a ton of this movie. Very small part. Very small part, but kills it. Comes in and hits a home run. Chris Cooper has never been bad in anything. Like... He comes in for like 10 seconds on The Amazing Spider-Man 2 to be Norman Osborn and just delivers a killer monologue and, you, and then dies. You're like, oh shit. Like, and like, even that movie Irresistible with Steve Carell in him, I think that's what it was called, is like not the most amazing movie, but he's really good. Like, he's really, really good in Irresistible. So like, he just does like, even in like the things that aren't adaptation for him, it's like he comes in and just kills everything. I really like Chris Cooper in uh, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. He is really good in A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. He is really good in that. And then he can also do very silly performances in The Muppets, where he's just a mustache-twirling villain, and he's so much fun. Um, But yeah, he's really good in this. He is one of our best character actors. Like, as the father in jail, I think he's so good. And I love how his character is kind of recontextualized by another character when Fergie, Pete Postlewaite, reveals what actually happened to Doug Ben Affleck's character's mother. Um, And I think that moment where Fergie reveals that is so interesting. I I really like just the character of Fergie, if I'm being honest with you. I I think Fergie's just like, (laughs) I I don't know, I like that, I like that I like this whole interaction a lot. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think it's like devastating. Um, but like I, I think Fergie, I don't know. 
I like Fergie a lot. I don't know. I just, I literally dug Fergie. <laughs> you know, it is so funny to me, though. This movie comes out in 2010. Yeah. This is the height of the Black Eyed Peas popularity. Yeah. And they name one of their major characters Fergie. Like, that's that's just very funny to me. It's that, a like, weird choice. Yeah, like, probably the the most popular Fergie has ever been and definitely will ever be is, like, 2010. And it's like, yeah, no, we're just going to call this intimidating crime boss Fergie. Like, that's the thing. Is there are so many things working against this character intimidation-wise, and it does not matter. It really does oh, not no. Oh Pete no! And is so scared. He is, and like I, I think Pete possibly, like we said, he just he seems so unassuming. He just seems like such a tough Boston guy the first time you see him, and then when he's like, "I'll kill you, I'll kill her, I'll kill everyone you love," you're just like, "Fuck!" <laughs> I believe it. I so believe it, and I'm terrified. <laughs> I just, yeah, I think Fergie is such a great antagonist, even if he's not really in the movie much. Like, All right, now let's let's get into the heist, because, who oh boy, this heist kills. Like, the the entire, like, heist sequence. The, the setup, there. the setup, like, to how it starts, of them walking in as cops, and then having the interaction with the security guards, where they, like, completely turn it around on them, and have them get on the ground and, handcuff, and get handcuffed, is, like, the best fuck you start to a heist I've ever seen. It's so good. It is, like, such a good sequence. And then I love when, like, they've got the two guys at the door with the money. And, it's like, your wife's names are Linda and Linda. We've got people stationed at your house. If you don't let us in, say goodbye. Like, yeah, these guys, like, they're so, it's just so intense. And, like, the actual heist is great. And, like, you can tell, there's there's a whole lot of heat to this movie. Like, I mean, like, the movie Heat. Like, you can tell Affleck, like, was very inspired by 95's Heat. Because there's a lot of principles to that there. Uh, especially kind of with the dynamic between Affleck and Ham, I feel like, of being two sides of the same coin. Though we get a lot more of Affleck than we do of John Ham and and Heat. We obviously get a lot of Pacino than we do yeah. John Ham and this. But yeah. Uh, I think this high sequence is so freaking well directed. And, and this movie does such a good job of any time a member of the heist goes down, you're just like, fuck. They yeah. make it brutal every time someone dies. Like, <laughs> the he- when the grenade goes off and, like, the, and everyone's flashbang and the guy stands up and they just, the headshot. It's yeah. such a visceral headshot that you're just like, fuck. That yeah. sucks. Mm-hmm. And I love the way, like, going into this, they set up what the stakes are when Renner gives what is one of my favorite lines in this movie. And it's like, I'm not going back to prison. If this thing gets jammed up, we're holding court on the street. Like, setting up the stakes of this is the end all be all for him. Like, I'm not going down. I'm we're I'm either dying or we're getting out of this. It's like that is such a great like setup of your stakes, and yeah, that this this movie. And is it, so it comes great. down to it comes down to that ending where you think they got away, like they got the mm-hmm. things and they're 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 clear. And Ham gets that piece of paper, they're just as cops, and he like instantly starts tailing all the different cops that are leaving the radius, and he finds Renner, and you're mm-hmm. like fuck, and that chase, and it just leads down to them having him cornered, and the moment that breaks your heart is when he just unloads the clips. And he walks up with empty guns and lets them kill him. And you're just like, oh, you're like, fuck. Then you're just like, damn it, Renner, why? And Affleck has to watch all of it happen. Yeah. And you're just like, fuck. It's so brutal. It is so brutal. This movie's so good. Like that, It is so good. Like this, and like, this is just one of those movies that even just talking about it's like, I literally just watched it an hour ago and I want to watch it again. Like, this is this is such a good, good movie. It is. Uh. And it's crazy that Affleck, like, Affleck's first directorial job is really solid. Yeah. I think this is, like, this would be most filmmakers, like, masterpiece. I think he just comes in and makes a home run. 
with yeah. this one. I think it's just a phenomenal crime drama. And like it takes all the lessons from Gone Baby Gone. I think he learned what not to do and basically perfected what he wanted to do on Gone Baby Gone with the town. And just like comes in here and crafts like such an emotional heist. And it's just so good. And like even down to the ending where you have Ham has Rebecca Hall caught and he can't take Rebecca. He, if he knows, if he goes to see Rebecca Hall, he's going to get caught. And mm-hmm. so he just leaves and he leaves the note for him on the door. And it's with uh, the tangerine. With the, the tangerine. And you just like, and Ham's like, well, fuck. And like, and then he just, and the thing that Logan Lucky just kind of directly rips off, giving the money to all the different people who he knows will need it. So mm-hmm. he can hide the money with all the people who need it as is great. And like wrapping this up with Affleck getting away, like Affleck gets away, no one else. And like, he doesn't get his happy ending, but he's not going to jail. And Ham is it? And Ham is gonna have to chase, him, keep chasing him across the country. Which is my favorite line that Ham has, which is kind of his button on the movie, where he's like, "You realize we're a national organization," <laughs> and it's like, and you're just like, it's like great. John Ham, a mega talent that should have an Academy Award nomination at least by now. Yeah, I I really hope Ham just starts getting more film roles because it just it feels like we don't Hollywood doesn't know what to do with the guy and that is so frustrating because he is he is just so good in this like he is really good in this and I hope he gets like I hope he gets like an actual like Oscar caliber role at some point like like in like a more like Oscar-y biopic or what have you like right like he needs he needs what Brian Cranston got with Trumbo which is like he plays he plays a part that is Oscar bait to a T, a biopic about someone where it's like, if they ever made a movie about him, he'd be nominated. And mm-hmm. let John Hamm play that part, get that Oscar nomination, and like and like get like sort of immortalized in that way. Mm-hmm. But like he's so good in even like bad, things like Bad Times of the El Royale. Like he's just terrific. And he's usually the supporting player that kind of has a specific part to play. And he does it so well that we forget about him. But like I always thought, like, I think John Hamm would have made a, a great Batman. John Hamm would have been a great Batman in the early 2010s. And now he's too old. But Here's I mean, thing. honestly, no, he's not. Because if we're doing the DCU and it's an older Batman with like Damian Wayne and like new young Robins, John Hamm could still play Batman. And I Here's think he'd be a great Batman. Sure. Harvey Dent. He'd be a great Harvey Dent. He would be a killer Harvey Dent. And he could play a Harvey Dent in the Reeves Batman universe. That's true. I think he could either be Two Face in the Batman crime saga, or he could be Batman in the DCU, and he'd be perfect at both. That is so good. Know, it, I think that's kind of the interesting thing, though, is I actually think most Batman actors could also pull off Harvey Dent. Now that I say that, like Michael, that's because they're kind of Harvey they're Dent. kind of it's because they're two sides of the same coin. Yeah, pun in, not necessarily intended, but like it's it's it, it, it's Christian Bale uh, would be an amazing Harvey Dent. He'd be great at it. And like I think George Clooney yeah, now, ben Affleck, though. I don't. Think I, I don't think Ben Affleck could be Harvey Dent, but I think George Clooney could have made a good Harvey Dent. George, oh, I want that. I, I think Val Kil- I think Val Kilmer and Ben Affleck are the two where it's like you wouldn't have been a great Harvey Dent. You'd have been. I think Val Kilmer could have been okay, but like those two would not make great Harvey Dents the way all the other guys would. Will Arnett, probably not, but that would be fun yeah. to see. No. And obviously, I don't think Kevin Conroy could have either. But like, it's like when you go through all the different actors, it's like I don't know. I I feel like you're right. Like Keaton would be good. Adam West in his old age could have voiced Two Face, and it might have been interesting. But like, I don't know. I I I, I think you agree on something. I think John Ham. You die. <laughs> I think John Ham is just so good. Like even just like in Confess Flesh this year, like he was just so delightful. It's so crazy. Like, that I, I want to see him in Best Fletch, and I have not. I really liked it. I thought he was really good in it. I want to see it. I, I, because I, I, it, it does not hold up. I, I have nostalgia for the original Fletch. Sure. It does not hold up. I have nostalgia for it. I really want to watch this because the thing I did rewatching it is that I realized Chevy Chase is actually not that great in Fletch. He's just kind of doing Chevy chasing all over it and not really like playing a character. So I think watching John Hamm play that character would actually be very fun. Because what John Hamm does really well with that movie is he takes this character and reinvents him. 
He's mm-hmm. the same guy. They reference the first two movies. Mm-hmm. But like he reinvents this part as a modern day, this is what Fletch would be. And he's really fun as this sort of snarky, sarcastic, self-deprecating guy. Mm-hmm. And Ham crushes it. Like I, I want to see more of, of uh, John Ham as Fletch. We won't. I think that's the last one. But like I, I would love to see John Ham play. Fletch, I'd love to see John Ham just be more of a leading man. Cause like in Mad Men, he's just insane. And it, it it still drives me insane that he didn't win his Emmy to like the last season. They waited till the last they do that all the time. But like mm-hmm. they waited till the last season to give him his Emmy. And that just kind of comes down to at the beginning of his career, he was up against the end of the Sopranos. Through the most of his career, he was up against Breaking Bad. And by the time he got to the end of his career with Mad Men, he finally had a chance to win. He had an opening. Because it was like, oh, your only competition is Game of Thrones. So when it comes to lead actors, they're not necessarily beating you. Yeah. So it's, it's he's just a phenomenal talent, and he deserves more. I, like I, he needs he needs more things like this. Because I think John Hammond, this is just so special. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, that's kind of the end of the the town. Uh, I, in case we haven't made it clear, the town rules. This this movie is just so freaking great. Like this is just an incredible crime movie. One of the best crime movies of the 2010s. Like this is fantastic film. Definitely. And, and to me, I, I think we can both say, we both like this better than God, baby gone. I would assume. I think this is, I think this is an, I think this is an improvement. It's a better movie. I think his first movie was really good. I think this is great. Um, Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to see where Argo falls on rewatch after this one on rewatch. Um, And I'm extremely excited to see how I feel about live by night almost 10 years later, having not seen it since theaters. Um, yeah, I, think I think your thoughts on Live By Night are going to be so interesting. I'm so curious about your thoughts on Live By Night. Yeah. And, Next, and we can talk about now, we can talk about now, the first reviews for Air are out, and I my excitement level's through the roof. The, yeah. the, the fact that they're calling it his best job as a director since Argo, or at the very least, is either his best or his second best behind Argo. And then, like, Matt Damon's best performance since the talented Mr. Ripley. You're just like, God damn, this is going to be, and they said the script sings like Affleck's great. Like I'm so excited. I'm so excited for this movie. Viola Davis apparently is Oscar worthy, but when is she? So. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, next week we're talking Argo, uh, which is interesting. Cause I, when's the last time you watched Argo? First I haven't time. seen Argo in a oh, very long time. That's fair. I also have not seen Argo in a while. Well, where do you fall on Argo? Because I am I feel like I feel the way most people do. It's like, yeah, it's good. I don't know. I don't think it deserves Best Picture. I don't think it's a great movie. I think it's a good movie. I don't know if Argo makes my 10 for Best Picture. I know Ar- I know Affleck I give a director nomination to because I do think it's really well directed. Um, I don't love... I, I, I remember liking Argo, but I don't remember loving Argo. Um, yeah. I'm excited to watch it. All right. Well, with that being said, that was The Town. Next week, we're talking to Argo. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll see you later.